Now, and the very last um, one that I've highlighted, now there's lots of other, as I say, ramblings of paddies and they go yes. out in different tangents, uh, is about um, planting of potatoes. So, uh, Paddy said, I spread cow manure on potato ridges with my hands when I was a barefooted boy because all uh, you might stick the grape in your foot. Boys and girls spread manure with their hands because when you teased it with your pads, it took less to cover the ridge. And cow manure was scarce because only four cows on a small farm. Now there would be 20 cows and no potatoes. What a change in my lifetime. I wouldn't like to ask some of the ladies I see parading the town now to come for a day's spreading of dung. Not a hope. All we nooks and small moss gardens were laboured in my young days. Because it was easier. Made rank to grow cabbage, turnips, rhubarb, stick as your arm and bunches of chives. Another job done well with your hands was tedding hay. And the children were good at that job. Old people said a cow wouldn't eat hay unless it was tedded with the hands. A woman made a better lap of hay because she had a skirt on. Old men wore a big lapping that kept the hay from going between your legs and you had a better top or skin on your lap to keep out the rain. Children got the job of twisting ropes for rucks of hay, twisted with a sally rod bent in the top and tied with a bit of hairy ned rope. This twist was called a thrahoop or thrawn. I often twisted with it. So I'm just moving on then to where he talked, mm-hmm. where he went on to talk about the the, the uh, uh, potato harvest. I heard an old man tell the proper place to plant an early ridge. He said, plant on the ridge of the land. The ridge of the land would have shelter from north winds and where the sun would shine all day. A Derry Lynn man told me of planting early potatoes on lee ridges. No dung on until the ridges, the plate, sorry, the potatoes were coming up to the mud. These potatoes rolled up in straw to keep them warm and safe from frost. Cow dung put on ridges when the potatoes would be well budded. Ridges were coped with a spade. Two good spadesmen of manor could set up a half rude Irish measure in a day, called a load setting in this ski area. Scarecrows made of sticks, propped up and dressed with old man's coat, trousers and a cap. A real man also hurdy gurdies were made of tin linen tin lids and windmills to scare away the birds. A man in the Derry Lynn area threw out manure in a creel on his back with a collapsible bottom in it. This man was nicknamed the Dung Remover. Nicknames on the potato plots in the boglands. We had the plot in the far bog, another's name, another neighbour's called Connolly's Rood, another Francis Anne's plot, the Smooth and Iron, and Nellie's Bog. All these plots along the Derry Lynn Road, and everyone going the road, walking or on bicycle or cart, all shouted into the men in their pots. One neighbour always stopped a stranger for a match to hear his news. All these plots of uh, potatoes had furrows shovelled up in the winter. Uh, my father, Lord Reston, always made me keep my back to the road when picking furrows uh, for him. No time to watch the road when at your work. Sods of mud and sticks were burned in the bog to have ashes to put on potatoes. This was reckoned to be good for growing potatoes. Keeping weeds pulled was a constant job, and keeping the crop moulded helped to kill the weeds. We sprayed early with bluestone and lime to keep the blight away. Drains were stanked in our bog to hold water for spraying. Men hired with farmers came from Cavan and Leitrim. One Leitrim man said to a farmer, I am not as fat going home as I was coming. The farmer said, Did, Didn't get you here to fatten you. Another man hired told how men in their bogs and cabin used to quit work to go to drink. There was a mixture of history in all the bog gardens in the Dairyland area that I worked in. I saw 90 creels of potatoes in one potato plot in Milltown Bog in Dairyland. I helped to dig some of them. I saw pits of potatoes. You got a grant for growing potatoes in the war years. Lots of women and girls helped with putting in crops in all bogs. I saw two women shoveling potatoes in Drumsham of Bog. I dug potatoes for neighbours in 1930, got a shilling a day, bought a packet of five wood pine for tuppence, but couldn't afford to buy a box of matches. We played cards at night, a penny game of 25, often 35 if money was scarce. No remarks were passed that time if you had no money. Not a word. That time about then cost, no word about the cost of living. Everyone was living on nothing, everyone on a level. The potatoes were sprayed with heather bisons, and a man named Patterson hired the first sprayer at a shilling a day. 
This man lived beside Derry Lynn Cross and was the petty sessions clerk. A whistle blew for the dinner around twelve o'clock. No one had a watch in the ball in the early years, but listened for the chapel angelus bell, twelve o'clock and six o'clock. In frosty weather, you could hear several bells. A farmer complained about his men praying to so many bells, he was robbing him. 